Mm, and I think I saw that I was getting good. <laughs> All right. For our course, right, um, under modules, I don't even think I added it. I might have to do that. We've started a new unit, right, module three. I don't remember the test date. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, I'll do that after. You'll see that I've added the objectives in the PowerPoint here. I did that this morning. I'm going to add our newest discussion board, um, infectious disease. So um, I'll click over to it. So for this one, I want you to pick an infectious disease in your book. And we're not going to cover all the infectious diseases in your book. Okay. So any one that interests you, and, and if it's one we're going to end up covering, fine, right? Just more practice. But the important thing for this one is that you can't pick a disease someone else has already picked, right? So um, I highly suggest today, tomorrow, or as quick as possible, if there's a particular disease you want to do, that you click reply, right, and type in your disease at least, right? That's going to be your first line of your post is the disease name, right? So if it is, say leprosy right type that in hit post reply and then you know before you go to post yours make sure you check and make sure no one else has picked your disease okay and remember you can collapse so you could easily see the first line of everybody's post or they or you can then expand it um, once you've posted you can edit these so remember if you click over here and at the settings you can click edit and then you could finish doing your post right so I could copy these questions put them in here right and then go back and, and answer them if you're answering them right straight from your book just put page numbers right um, if you're using some other source in addition to your book make sure you document that use an MLA format right make sure you cite where you get your information from because if you post something that's inaccurate here I'm definitely going to be looking at that uh, for these okay I want you guys to do your initial post by Wednesday next week so you have one week to get this done then as always right we're going to reply to two of your classmates so once you edit you can hit done right and you can see that it was edited and updated I on the other hand should I leave this one for you guys anyone want to do leprosy yeah I might leave this as an example I was gonna delete it but I think I'll leave it as an example All right. so remember always right below the discussion board here's the for your initial reply to the discussion board itself right. remember you can edit it She's get, getting on. There's one she wants to do. She's already getting on her phone. <laughs> A couple of you guys. Right? Um, so, yeah, snag, the, snag a particular disease if you want to do it. It has to be an infectious disease, right? It has to be caused by a causative agent, a virus, a bacteria, a protozoa, right? You can't do things like heart disease, okay? It's got to be an, an infectious disease, okay? And then you're going to list the signs and symptoms, right? And then you're going to talk about how it makes us sick, right? What's bad news about it? Remember when we talked about, like, tuberculosis, part of the bad news with that one is that it can grow inside our macrophages that should kill it. All right, so that's the type of information, right, um, that we want. Um, how do you get it? Where does it come from, right? With tuberculosis, it's airborne, right? You could inhale it. Other things, you may ingest it with your food. Right? Others, you may have to have direct contact with, say, body fluids like saliva or blood or semen. It, it makes it easier if it's one in your book because then I definitely know it's an infectious disease and you're not doing something you're not supposed to do it. Huh? Yeah. And, and for that one, 
So hand, foot, and mouth. I think that's viral. I think there's just one virus that causes that too. Um, and then describe um, treatment and prevention. And notice, it, um, make sure if there's no treatment or prevention that you say that, right? So as you're answering this one, if there's no prevention, write no prevention, right? If there's no treatment, write no treatment, right? If there is treatment or prevention, of course, list, right, and discuss what you could do to prevent getting it and what you could do to treat it once you have it. Does that make sense to you guys? Right. So we definitely want to have your initial posts done by Wednesday, right? And the next couple of days, you may want to snag a particular disease because you can't repeat one that someone else has already done. Okay. So then the next thing uh, I want to show you guys is this uh, Echo 360 um, that you guys can use uh, for bonus. So I, um, I'm actually logged into a different browser, and this is a different class, um, but similar um, thing. This, they're on a topic that you guys have already covered. Uh, but you'll notice that there'll be the date of the class, and there'll be a presentation for you to view. And so, for instance, I'm going to click on this one. For you guys, there's just one. You could click here and download the PowerPoint. Right? You could view the presentation, or you can see you could download it. But I also have it posted for you guys on campus. What I want you guys to do is click on it and then click on the button that says go to classroom. When you do that, you will see my presentation, but also what you will see is that there's a section for you to be able to take notes. Um, if you use this, I will know you use it, I will know how many words you type, but I will not see your notes. They're for you. Okay. Um, and if you were to say bring your laptop or tablet or something to class and you wanted to look at this, it will not follow me, right? This is for you. And so that way, say I went to the next slide, it's not going to go to the next slide on you. Um, so that way you could still take your notes as it relates to the slides. Um, you can bookmark particular things by clicking the little bookmark. Right? So if you wanted to bookmark, say you were in class trying to take notes, um, on, say, this slide, right? you could bookmark it so to remind yourself that you want to come back to that particular slide. So notice it put the slide number there. right? And it records what you do. What I want to do with you guys is I want to utilize the questions um, component. And this component is kind of like a discussion board. So you'll notice for my um, other class, I posed some questions for them, right? Um, I, I posed what fluids contains lysozyme, which actually you guys should know this answer, right? Because we just took a test on this, right? Um, although I don't know if that one was on the test. Do you guys remember what? Mucus? Anything else? Uh, I don't know. If it might be in breast milk. It's definitely in your tears, right, and your saliva, right, those um, fluids, and even in your tissue fluids itself. So you'll notice that some of my students have already started replying, right? So see this little box right here? There are, there are 10 replies to this question. Uh, what are antibodies? Nine of them have replied. So if you wanted to reply to a question, and I'm going to post, as I said, questions ahead of time for you guys. So when you guys go to our class and let me switch over to our class so for our class notice here it's um, skin for Friday you can see the presentation right if you go to the classroom right now I haven't posted the questions yet but if you click here It'll give you the questions. I don't have a notes button, right? Because this is I'm, I'm in my view, not my student view. Um, and so to post a question, you would click new question. And I can tag it to particular slides in the presentation. And there's different ways you can move. You can just push the arrows. Right? 
It's taking a second to load. And this is a good one. I might actually list this one right now. So I'm going to pose a new question. List the function functions of skin. So we'll do this. Name one function So that way we'll get different response, right? Just pick one. And I'm going to reference this particular slide. And notice you can post anonymous, anonymously, right? Because whatever you post, everyone will see, OK? Um, so when you guys come in, you'll see this question. Under questions, you'll see that it goes with slide two. And then if you want to reply to it, you just click right here. Right, and then you can respond and even reference this slide. You click respond to this question, and then you could type in your response. And you can even post anonymously, right? So if you don't want other people to know that you wrote that, that's fine. Um, under the analytics and stuff, I will still know it's you, so you'll still get your bonus points, right? So if you, you know, you're apprehensive, right? That's fine. You can just click the post anonymously, right? Um, so I'm, I'm going to do one just for fun. There you go. Clearly not necessarily true, right? Not what I'm looking for. Do you guys see what I posted? <laughs> to make you look pretty. Right? So when I go back, right, You'll see the question, right? You can see that somebody replied, so you could click on it and see um, what their response was. So, and you can, um, from you guys' view, again, it, it won't say my name. It'll just say anonymous. So there's one already for you guys, right? So when you go into this and go to questions, you could reply to this one. The other way you can move around between the slides is to click on the word slide two or whatever, and I'll bring up the slide sorter, which is going to show you all the slides in the presentation. Right. And so you'll notice that some of these slides, right, contain data and stuff like that. And that's the, the last thing that I want to talk about today is I want to show you guys something cool. So I'm going to post some more questions. I'm probably going to post 10 or so questions. You don't have to answer them all, right? Um, you'll get a bonus point, though, for each one you answer before class. It's going to be done before Friday. All right? It has to be done before class in order to get the bonus points. And so I'm going to do this for the rest of the semester, right? Try and get you guys looking at this stuff ahead of time. Uh, what do I want to do? Oh, okay. So you'll notice I even have it bookmarked. So some of that data and stuff I have in these presentations is for this, from the Centers of Disease Control. Um, and so this is an excellent website. This is another good one for getting information about your diseases, right? Whichever infectious disease you're, you're um, investigating. Uh, they put out a publication every week. They've changed around their website on me. looking for it. It's called the Weekly Mortality, oh, there it is, Science, um, Mortal Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, the MMWR. And this is an excellent one um, to read. So they always have interesting um, studies and articles, right? So trends in, in, in quitting um, smoking, uh, looking at um, use of cigarette, cigar, and marijuana use among uh, high school students, a study that they did. In addition, in the report, they um, report the uh, state uh, health statistics. So when you click on that, there are notifiable diseases, diseases that the, each state has to report if somebody has it, right, if someone's been diagnosed with it. So, um, and then this information is published weekly. Mortality refers to, to deaths, um, and it's just the number of deaths, not like how the person died. 
Uh, morbidity refers to these infectious diseases. So if we wanted to actually look at the, t search the tables, you click on it. And so, for instance, for this year, um, in the current week, it'll automatically go to that. You hit submit. And the first table is, is stuff that there's usually only about 100, no more than 1,000 cases a year. So when you hit submit, you'll see anthrax, for instance. There was no reported cases this current week. Um, there, were, there weren't any so far in 2015. The last time we saw a case was in 2011. Diphtheria. Notice this one too, right? Very few cases. The reasoning for diphtheria, why we haven't seen any cases in a long time? Vaccination, right? Vaccination has pretty much almost wiped that one out. Um, where is one I want to look at? Notice Hansen's disease, which is known as leprosy, right? One case, 44 so far this year, right? Averaging about 80. Notice that that one case off to the side, it tells you what state it occurred in, right? So that was in, in North Carolina. Remember we talked about resistance with Staphylococcus aureus to antibiotics, and I said vancomycin was our newest Right, so they're keeping track of that. Uh, we have all these lovely viral disease. They even put e Ebola on the list now. Wow. Uh, smallpox, notice we don't see any cases of it. Thank goodness. Rabies, right, there have been cases. Very few, though, because we know how you get that and how to avoid it. Um... Meningococcal diseases, right, these are the ones that typically cause the serious um, meningitis. Um, the different types that we have vaccines against, as opposed to ones we do not. Oh, here's the abroviruses. This is the one I was looking for. Oh, yeah, West Nile's not on here, because remember what I said about this table? Less than 1,000 cases typically per year. So let's go, I'm going to hit the back button, and let's quickly go to, say, Table 2, Part 1. Notice Table 2 has 14 parts. That's because these are the ones that are have much higher incidence. It happens more often. Um, so for, uh, I'm not interested in those two diseases. They're in alphabetical order. There was a particular one I'm looking for. Chlamydia, here we go. Look at this, right? In that current week, our current week, 15,000 cases in the United States, right? This is the leader, right, of infectious disease. Um, so far this year, a million cases, right? So then you're curious, because these have such high incidence, notice that they break them down by region and state. So let's look at, of course, where we live, right? Louisiana. No reported cases that week. Wow, that's pretty amazing. But so far this year, 18,000 cases of chlamydia. <laughs> right? So I'm going to really blow your guy's mind. I'm going to go back, right, to 2014, the last week. I think the 52 week might be it for this one. So what, what was I on? Table 2, Part 2? Hopefully Chlamydia last year was on Table 2, Part 2. Nope. Of course, Dengue virus. They add different ones, so then it gets me out of order. So it's probably Table 1. There's Chlamydia. So last year, in the United States, at the end of the year, right, 2000. 14, 1,330,942 cases. See, that's kind of messed up, okay? Because now we're looking at numbers on here, and see how many people, well, how many cases they have, but 
Right. Right. So if you look into exactly, you're saying how the person got that particular infectious disease. But we do know how this one is transmitted, right? So the fact that this number is so high, what are we not doing a good job at? Protecting ourselves. And the first step to protection is what? What are you guys doing in this classroom right now? Having knowledge. <laughs> knowledge about infectious disease, right? How it's spread, how it's transmitted. But yeah, clearly we're not doing anything in the class right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. Makes sense to you guys? Right? So probably one of the most important things you can do for the health of our community, right, is to help educate others. Yes, and go to the doctor and have safe sex. All right, y'all. Work on your discussion board.